Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this part of the series, we're gonna add the collision detection. Now we can play the game and rotate the ball. And once we hit one of the obstacles, we have this game over screen. And we can replay the game using this retry button. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So here's what we left off from the previous video. Now we can rotate the ball using the mouse or the touch screen. But we can't lose in this game and it's a little bit boring. We're gonna check if the ball hits one of these chunks. In such case we're gonna display a game over screen so that we can replay the game again. And to do that we have a built-in function that you could use inside Unity. We're gonna create a C-sharp script that is responsible for the player collision under the scripts folder. Let's right click, create, C-sharp script, and let's call it player collision. Then we have to attach it to the ball, and each time it hits something, the function on collision enter will be called, and we can check if it's the obstacle. And to do that, we have to attach the script to the ball. We have here the ball pivot. Let's select the ball. Then we can drag in the script which is player collision and let's open it up and each script has these two methods by default we don't need these and we're gonna use the on collision enter first we add the return type which is void then the name of the method or function and it is called on collision enter and this function takes a parameter the type is collision and let's call it C or collision then we have to open and close these curly braces now each time the ball collides with one of the obstacles this function will be called and we can check if it's the obstacle using this parameter and to check for that we have to assign some sort of tag to the obstacles let's go under the prefabs folder and let's open up the first one so these are the pipes with their obstacles. We have to select all of the chunks, which are called cylinder. Select the first one, then shift select the last one to select all of these chunks. And from the inspector, we have this tag parameter. By default, it is set to untagged. We can create a new one and assign it to these cylinders using add tag. Let's hit this plus icon. I'm gonna call it obstacle then hit save we have to select these again now you will be able to select the obstacle tag and that will assign it to these obstacles and I want to mention that the on collision enter function will not work if the obstacle doesn't have some kind of collider for now we have the mesh renderer which represents the obstacle mesh let's add a new component using add component then search for collider we have a box collider a capture collider and so on i'm gonna use the box collider type then you will notice that we have these green edges and it is the box collider component now let's do the same thing for the other obstacles let's open up this prefab select all of the cylinders let's add the box collider then assign the obstacle tag and so on the last one is empty so you don't have to add anything now let's go back to the c-sharp script now we have to check if the object has the obstacle tag in such case we're gonna pause the game and display the game over screen using if then collision dot game object luckily we have another method or function that is called compare tag using dot compare tag and it will check if the object has the tag obstacle in such case it returns true and all of the lines of code that we write here is gonna be called now to test this function 
I'm gonna pause the game using time dot time scale. By default, it is one when the game is running. If you set it to zero, the game will be paused. Let's save the script. Now, before we test the game, make sure that the ball has the player collision script and a collider like a sphere collider. And we need to apply some kind of physics to this ball to make sure that the function on collision enter works. We have to add a component and it is called the rigid body component. Just search for rigid body and select it. But that will apply some sort of physics to the ball, like the gravity. So let's test it. And as you can see, the ball falls down. To fix this problem, we can add some constraints. Basically, we can freeze the position and the rotation of the ball. We only need the rigid body component. And let's hit play. And there you go, the game is paused. Also, we can avoid obstacles. Now we're going to display a game over screen when we have a game over. For now, we can't replay or do anything. And to do that, we're going to add another global variable. So recently, we've created this player manager script that manages our game states. For example, we can check if the game is over or not whether it's posed or not, and so on. Recently, we've added this level started boolean. Let's add another one using public static, which means a global variable. Let's use a boolean. I'm going to call it game over or is game over as you like. By default, we're going to set it to false under the start function. You could use game over equals false instead i'm gonna use game over equals level started equals false which will set these booleans to false now under the player collision we can access the game over parameter or boolean using the name of the script which is player manager dot game over equals true now, under this C-sharp script, player manager, we can go under the update function. And each time, we will check if we have a game over using if game over. In this case, we're going to pause the game using time dot time scale equals zero. Then we can add a reference to the game over panel, like we have done here with the start menu panel using public game object. Let's call it game over panel. We haven't created this yet. Under this if statement, we have to enable it using game over panel dot set active and pass in true to enable it. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's go back into Unity and create the game over panel. So under this canvas, let's right click UI and we can choose a panel let's give it the same name game over panel here you could change some settings i think i'm gonna make a dark color and change the opacity a bit then we have to add a button so that we can replay the level using right click ui and let's add a button with text mesh pro but this is an external package make sure to import it using this import button now we have this button object. I'm going to call it replay. You could also change the text to retry. Or we can get rid of it and use some sprites. Under the sprites folder, we have this retry button. But to use it, we have to change its type. Select the button. And from the inspector, change the texture type from default to sprite 2D and UI. Then hit apply. Now we'll be able to select it from here. Or we can simply drag it like this. We can change the size a bit. Let's change the width to 100. And the height to 45. Also we can change its position. I'm going to move it along the y-axis by minus 200. Or 150. I think it's okay. 
and you could add as many UI elements as you want. For example, let's add a text under this game over panel using right click UI. I'm going to use the text mesh pro and let's write game over. Basically, the text mesh pro allows you to create different kind of text by adjusting these parameters. You could change it to italic, bold and so on. I'm going to leave it as default. But I need to center it horizontally and vertically. Now we're going to disable this game over panel by default. And when we have a game over, we are going to enable it. We've already added this logic. We have game over panel set active to true. But we have to assign it or reference it from the inspector. Let's select the player manager object and reference the game over panel. Then let's hit play. And there you go, we have this game over screen with this retry button. For now we can't replay the level, we haven't added the logic to this button. And to implement that, we can create a function to replay the level. Then each time we press the button, which is the replay button, we're gonna call it. We can create a C-sharp script that contains all of the functions. For example, to replay the level. Under the scripts folder, let's right click again, create C-sharp script. Let's call it button events. Then open it up in VS Code. First, I'm gonna get rid of the start and update functions. And let's create a new one using public so that we can access it from the button void and let's call it retry under here we're gonna replay the level and to do that we can use the scene management namespace you have to go up here and add using unity engine dot scene management now we can use this namespace to load the scene using scene manager dot load scene and this function takes the name of the scene for now we have one level and it is saved under the scenes folder by default it is called sample scene we can rename it using rename level and let's go back to the script here we can pass in the name of the level or the name of the scene using level or we can use its index basically each scene has a unique index and to access this index we can go to file build settings for now we haven't added the scenes make sure to add the open scenes which is our level and as you can see it has the index zero so make sure to do that and let's use the index instead which is zero save the script the same thing in order to use this script we have to attach it to an object so let's create an empty game object using right click create empty i'm gonna call it button events as well and let's attach our script that has the function or try finally we can select the button which is the replay button then under here we have this on click section we can add the functions that will be called each time we press the button replay let's add a new one using this plus icon and here we can drag in the script or the name of the object button events and once you do that you will be able to select the function so go to this no function under these options we have the button event script and the name of the function or try and that will reload the scene again and replay the level by default we have the start menu and once we start playing as you can see I can rotate the ball and each time we hit one of the obstacles we have this game over screen and the retry button let's press it and yeah it's working we can play the level again but the time to time scale still equals zero that's why the game is paused and you could easily solve this problem by going to the player manager script and the start function is called once when we start the level under here we can change the time scale back to one using time dot time scale equals one 
and let's try this again so here we have the game over screen we can replay but you will notice when we have a game over I can rotate the ball and that's not realistic basically we can open the player controller script in which we are rotating the ball recently we've added this if statement to check if the level isn't started then we have to return with the same way we can check if the game is over we need to return as well you could add another if statement if player manager dot game over if it's true we have to return I think that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.